Here's our 2005 Tiffin Phaeton, 40 foot. And we have really been enjoying using it the last couple years since we have owned it. We're not the first owners. And I've done several major uh, repair projects on it since we've owned it. I've replaced the floor in the wet bay soon after we bought it. It was totally destroyed, rotted. And uh, that was quite an effort. And a few other things, not quite as that significant. But uh, our last trip of 2019, we were uh, coming back home and I kept hearing a leakage of air out from under the front end. Investigating that this spring, discovered that uh, one of the airbags on the driver's side, the lift suspension bag, had a hole in it needed to be replaced so I'm I've tackled that project today tools I'm going to use for this project a hammer a a two foot breaker bar half inch with an extension handle on it about three feet a small bottle uh, jack a regular ratchet uh, half inch with an inch and an eighth socket on it. A uh, small speed square, frame uh, carpenter speed square. Just a pry bar, small pry bar, and a pneumatic uh, wrench with an inch and an eighth deep well socket on it. So to begin with, I have. Uh, lowered all the jacks uh, down and leveled it and then I, I put uh, some chocks under the back wheel here raised it then I went inside and raised it manually the front end all the way up as high as I could get it with the uh, front wheels completely off the ground you're going to need all that clearance you can if you're doing this like I'm doing it and not on some lift somewhere. Even there, I think you'd still have to have it very suspended. And for safety measures, I put uh, blocks underneath to uh, serve as any kind of uh, added measure if, it, if the jacks were to suddenly start leaking down. So with that, I'm going to go underneath and show you what uh, we're facing here. So here is the uh, suspension airbag that I have already replaced on the driver's side. And since I'm under here doing it, I decided to go ahead and replace both uh, bags uh, while, while I'm at it. So this side's completed, and I'll take you through the process on the passenger side airbag replacement in this video and documentary with it. Okay, first couple things here you're going to need to do is take this air hose line loose. To do that, you simply take this collar up here, push that back with your finger and thumb. Simultaneously, while that's being held in, you pull back on the uh, PEX tubing here, air line, and yeah, that will easily pull right out. Okay, here's the one I'm going to replace next over on the passenger side. And you can see the uh, air hose, which is not the one we're talking about here, but this one right there has already been removed. And, uh, you know, other than the problem with this whole job here, it's kind of tight up here to work. But, you see that that uh, shiny nut under there? That's where the bottom of the uh, airbag is uh, attached to the frame here. Actually, it's attached to this heavy, like, quarter inch or better, three-eighths inch steel plate that is the base for the airbag that it sits, sits on. It also is the same 
piece that bolts the axle. I'll take you under here. This is the front axle. So it, it secures that axle to the leaf spring. Leaf spring coming through here and uh, being held in place. The axle is being held in place on the leaf spring by two bolts this side, two bolts the other side. Now if you could, if they had provided a way to get a wrench on that nut under there and remove it, none of the rest of this would have been much of a challenge. <laughs> but uh, as it stands, uh, there is no way possible to get a wrench on that thing. I tried. But uh, to create enough space and room, you've got to drop this whole axle on this side by taking these four bolts completely loose and lifting the airbag and the, the plate that it sits on all out as a unit and uh, dealing with it, uh, taking that nut loose pretty much out from under the vehicle. Okay. The other thing we're going to have to do is uh, over there we got to create a nut as much space under here as possible so the uh, bolt there that secures the front shock over there has got to be removed so they'll to allow the leaf spring to drop down as much as possible to create space to work with this base plate here to get it high enough to get out of here. Alright, uh, I think that is uh, all we'll talk about right now. Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention is that the torque on these bolts, uh, 220 uh, pounds torque. So it takes quite a bit of effort to get those babies broken loose. Hence the long uh, extension breaker bar and the extra pipe that I put on it. I've already broken these loose, uh, just a, about a half turn or so, just enough to get them started, and then from here on out, I can use the, uh, the air wrench to remove them the rest of the way. Okay, the other thing we're gonna do is put a bottle, one of our, the bottle rocket right under here to support this axle as we take these bolts loose, the axle is going to drop down and, uh, and the wheel will come on down to the pavement and we'll be needing to manipulate this axle up and down as we go through the, the project a little bit. So other than those four bolts right there, there is one more right up here on top. That's the only mounting bolt, the one that's sticking straight up through the, the top plate on that airbag. And I've already taken the, the nut off of it. Okay. So with that, I'm going to uh, take these bolts off and we'll pick it up from there. Okay, one other little thing thing I thought about was uh, as you take this loose the axle could slide backwards on this leaf spring so I'm putting a using a sharpie marker to put me a witness mark on this piece of the leaf spring there so I can make sure it's in position so I've back where where it was when I before I started and I put a mark there and I put another one right up there you can see the blackness on that so I can match those back up when I get things back together okay I've removed the uh, all the nuts off the bottom of these uh, bolts and uh, allowed the axle on this side to drop to the ground this tire is now firmly on the ground and you can see uh, space underneath the 
the leaf spring and the top of the front axle on this side. I haven't taken the shock bolt off yet. I might be able to get by without having to do that, but we'll see. And so now I'm ready to try to move the bag out of position. Two of these bolts will come out uh, easily, uh, but the other two, are, you can't take them out completely because they're underneath this flange that the airbag rests on. They're, the heads of them go down into a well here in this plate, and uh, anyway, they're underneath this this thing here. The the flange that the airbag sits on and there's no way to remove them because of that. So to uh, get the airbag off you pull down on it to uh, pull it out of put the, pull the book that's out here on the outside uh, hanger over there and just pull it down to create some space and start working off of here. The other thing I found was useful is to take that little pry bar put it right underneath here and start prying up this base plate off of the leaf spring itself. So we'll give that a go and see how that works out. So here's the top of the bag. I've got the upper mounting bolt pulled out of its uh, bracket up here and we'll try to work the whole bag towards the rear of the of the RV down towards that that shock there and getting this base plate to lift up and tilt that direction as well then we'll have to get in underneath these last two bolts and uh, fiddle with those with your fingers maybe bump them with a hammer underneath to uh, get them to move on up inside this uh, flange it's kind of deep under there so you have some space to allow those bolts to move up inside that as you work the whole thing off. So we'll, that'll be a next step here. You can see that I've got the uh, base plate uh, pried up away off the top of the leaf spring there creating pretty much all the space I need to finish uh, getting these last two bolts to lift out. Uh, again, this little pry bar that you can pick up at any hardware store, Harbor Freight, someplace, is just the thing you need to make that thing uh, pull up out of there, pry it up out of there, and give you the leverage you need to get that thing up in the air to uh, create the uh, distance clearance you need for these bolts to be brought out. Now the bolts on the on the back side are shorter than the ones on the front because uh, they have to go through not only the axle thickness but this uh, plate down here that connects this tie rod and down here. So good news here I was able to push the uh, airbag with the in its base towards the back sliding it down that leaf spring and uh, pulling down on the top of the bag to collapse it with both hands from underneath and uh, work it over to its side and I'll take it uh, out through that space there on the back side of the tire between the tire and the shock over there and we'll get it outside and uh, take the old one off and mount the new one on. So here she is, the old one taken out, the prize we've been after for this little, little while. And there's that dreaded large nut that you can't get off from underneath if you could. This project would be extremely simple without having to go through this rigmarole. But that's not the case. So we're going to enjoy the moment here, I think. And just get it off of there.
Okay, here's your look at a new airbag on the right as opposed to an old one on the left, the one we just took out from the passenger side underneath. And first thing that strikes you is the new one is uh, looks to be at least four, maybe five inches shorter than the other one. But that's only uh, because uh, this one is new and it's all folded down around this base plate down here that that the airbag sits on which being in that smaller configuration will help us greatly on getting it back in place underneath the rig so the other thing I'm doing here to get uh, ready for this one to go on the new one I've uh, removed the air fitting here from the old one I've cleaned it up going to use some pipe uh, dope over here to fill in the threads and put that on right here this uh, plate here that comes with the new one we don't need so we'll be taking that button that there loose and getting uh, that out of the way and the final thing I've done up here is uh, brought the the mounting bolts that the base plate underneath the hanger bolts that uh, secures the axle and use a wire brush and cleaned a lot of the rust off of off of that you could probably do a better job yet than that but my goal here is just to make it a little bit uh, less uh, cruddy going back down through the, the bolt holes uh, when we get underneath it'll make it a little smoother going down so we get this all set up and get back down to uh, the RV and get this underneath well, let's talk about this situation here because this is where you could make a mistake that would cost you extra work. Okay, here's the mounting plate and uh, it goes back under the vehicle in this orientation with this uh, little mouth area to the inside, this flat uh, one to the wheel side and uh, the two long bolts are going to go on this side, the two short ones on that towards the back of the vehicle now as we're putting in the new mounting this new airbag we want to make sure a couple things are correct I have uh, swapped over the air fitting got that mounted on the new one and I want it pointing back in this orientation towards the front of the vehicle the other thing to be of note and we'll take care of this uh, a little more precisely in a moment is when we are putting this back on the base plate there this uh, bolt here that's going to attach to the top hanger has got to be on this side in the middle between those two holes and perpendicular to that uh, side there we'll uh, make sure that's the case here when we uh, are tightening up the the uh, bolt, uh, the nut underneath. So before we put the new one on top of the plate, we're going to see these two here are covered by the by the base of the of the airbag, so you can't get to it. So as we're assembling the new airbag on top of the mounting plate, first thing we got to make sure here is to make we have these two bolts already in place because the airbag is going to sit right on top of those two. We won't have access to those holes. So put those in first and then we'll put the uh, airbag down through its uh, mounting hole down there and uh, secure the bolt to the bottom of it. Okay, here's a little tip to make sure you get this right after you get the... Uh, airbag you know loosely put through the hole with this nut in place but loose you got these two bolts it's got to go in there first in place the long one towards the front of the vehicle the short one to the back now the the face of this mounting plate that's uh, that's uh, straight edge we're going to put it flat flat on a down on a flat surface and over here the the uh, stud that's going to go through the upper mounting bolt uh, 
upper mounting plate, we're going to take this little square and make sure that it's sitting perpendicular. Okay, like that. Just like that before we tighten that nut up down here on the end. Otherwise, that will not align with the with the uh, plate that's got to go into on the frame up here. To start the reinstallation underneath, you want to work your bag back through that space between the uh, tire and the shock over there, work it back through there, and then get it up here on the axle and disorientation here with the two bolts that we've already got in installed down through the center, like this, uh, lined up almost with the holes that are going to go down through. The other two bolts we can put in uh, from the top after we get these, these two here already in place. So we're going to start working the, these two uh, bolts down through the holes and get the uh, airbag uh, down in, in its uh, proper uh, place and then we'll uh, start tightening things up. Alright, we've got the new airbag seated. Uh, the upper air hose slipped into its fitting. We've got the four bolts in and the nuts loosely attached and on the other side over here we have the top uh, nut screwed down and tightened firmly on the bracket that we left in place from the original and you can see it standing a little proud here and uh, next step is to release the uh, bottle jack to let this uh, front axle drop down and one thing I can see here is my my black witness mark under here that I put with the black uh, magic marker cannot be seen. That means I've got to slide the axle back uh, maybe an eighth of an inch, quarter inch, something like that. And tighten these bolts up to specifications which is uh, 220 foot-pounds and uh, we'll call this project done. Now, I would have to say it's taken me probably an uh, hour and a half per side and maybe a little longer than that with us stopping and videoing and so forth. But it's a project that can be done by a handy person with the right kind of tools. And if you want to save a couple of hundred bucks, uh, something you can tackle and do it right do it safely of course with the putting your blocks underneath to make sure if the pressure on the jacks uh, were to get released somehow you can stay under here safely and with that we'll call this project done <laughs>